Y. Deptford. The dagger came in above my right eye. Here. You can still see the mark. And straight through to the brain which stopped on the instant. Out like a light. No more Marlow. No more of Marlow. Artificial light. Isn't it a wonder? Magic. <laughs> well, yes. Sebastian Ziani de Ferranti from Liverpool. England was in the dark. In 1881, the year I started work, a power station opened in New York built by Thomas Edison, who invented the light bulb. I told them I'd build a power station bigger than anyone had yet dreamed of, that could pump out 10,000 volts through its main cables, over four times what was thought to be safe, over four times. When I arrived in Deptford, the living conditions of the poor were appalling. The streets and alleys indescribably filthy with rubbish, alive with rats, and the children, uncombed, ragged, dirty, starved of food, of sleep, of care, starved of fun. What hope could there be for children so crushed by neglect? Except one day to produce children of their own, to be crushed in their turn by the self-same neglect. When something is rotted, there's no repairing it. It is finished. It has to be replaced. It needs change. Rachel, my sister and I, got stuck in. Deptford, home and hub of the Navy. Henry VIII lit on Deptford by the Thames for his royal dockyard. The heart of London. The heart of England. For me, since I was a lad, it was finding out how things worked. It all started in the back of an old sailmaker's yard, an old dilapidated boat. A pinage, technically. Flat bottom, square stern, but, but, and this is the great thing, it could sail against the wind. Poet has to make a living somehow. I chose to make my living in the service of the state, the secret service of the state. I can't go into all that. You'll have to just take my word for it. I lived and moved in a world of agents and counter-agents. Liars and subtle men whose word no one would take without questioning it. Men whose word would change on something being true within that hour to the same something being quite false. Acres of trees, all gone cut down to build the ships. I've suggested, no, urged, the need to plant trees, sweet-smelling trees, to purify London's air. Good heavens, we have these brilliant ideas and then we do nothing with them because stupid people, stupid, ignorant people say it won't work, instead of listening to those who know perfectly well that it will. All right, they said, and, uh, where do you propose to build this monster power station? Huh. Deptford, I said. Poverty is hateful. But real poverty goes deeper than lack of money. It's in the starved, cramped, diseased bodies and minds. The eyes that do not see. The ears that do not hear how things might be different. Must be. Peter the Great, Tsar of all the Russians. I was christened Peter, the great bit I added myself. I see no purpose in swanning around saying, I'm great, I'm great, unless you do something. And if you want my opinion, and you're not in any position to refuse it, if you want to do something, you have to do it yourself. Your servant, Samuel, Sir Samuel Bentham, Inspector General of the Navy. We had to command the sea, always have. That meant ships and men to sail them. And here they were built, designed, repaired, fitted, rigged, provisioned, in these yards. See this, a coin of the realm. It will pay for whatever someone takes it to be worth, a pound in return for a pound's worth of goods. And if I tell you that this coin 
is counterfeit, forged money. What is it worth then? Death at the end of a rope if you're caught. But if you're taken in and accept this coin at face value, you're deceived, aren't you? Hoodwink. Deception is like magic, though not necessarily untrue, if you really do believe that magic works, that magic exists. The land attached to Say's court was in a sorry state. A few untended, spindly fruit trees, the rest open glebe. Well, what scope it offered? What opportunity? The open riverside walk thronged with shipwrights, colkers, sailmakers, naval architects, foundrymen, apprentices, officers, sailors of every rank, the whole kingdom ashore and afloat of England's sea power. In time it became, if I may say so, and it's not by opinion only, it became a marvel. A landscape park with walks and groves, enclosures, plantations, oval gardens, box hedges and curiosities. We opened a clinic. Two doctors, a dentist, a full-time nurse, a teacher to instruct the children how to take care of themselves, and a caretaker. We were in business. My wife Gertrude supported me all the way through. She said <laughs> fondly, the thing I remember about those first months of married life was Deptford and again Deptford. I laid out beds for flowers, herbs, vegetables, shrubs, trees of every sort, spacious aviaries, carp ponds, bowling greens. Next, a boys' camp. The vicar loaned us the churchyard and we dug vegetable plots along the wall for the boys to look after. It was like being on a seesaw, up, down, up, down, up, down. My stomach lurching, up, down, but no fixity. But there was so much going on here. I couldn't tear myself away. An Aladdin's cave. Here, I worked long days with master craftsmen, navigators, naval architects, and building ships and everything in them. Stem to stern, bilge to high tops, Hard work, fresh air, ate like a horse, with the table manners of a pig. Even as a nipper in the trade, I wasn't shy of piping up with new ideas. Improvement in the steering gear, the gun mountings. Oh, they listened. They knew a good thing when they saw it. Then off to Russia to get their navy ship shape. Their Tsar comes here, I go there. I planted my orchard in a gentle west wind and, most important, under a new moon. The local paper complained about us growing broad beans in the hallowed dust of Christopher Marlowe. But the real challenge was to learn how to build a navy. And I'll let you into a secret. If I hadn't spent what turned out to be three months here in Deptford, learning everything, Russia would never have got her navy. Even Thomas Edison was there. And when the journalists clamoured round him saying the risks were too great, that the whole idea was utterly mad, that it simply wouldn't go, he just smiled and said, oh, it will go. It's like copulating with an elephant. The effort is enormous, the pleasure minimal, and you have to wait at least 18 months for a result. At various times, the natural elements have wrought havoc here. A tempest from the southwest uprooted huge ancient trees. 29 years old. Cut is the branch that might have grown full straight. It's my belief that if Christopher Marlowe knew his mortal remains were to be used to provide nourishment for the pauper children of Deptford to make them healthier and stronger, he would be pleased. I would be. We had a fine time in Deptford. Remember it with pleasure. Always will. For the children, it was like coming into paradise here. What fun to see them laughing, playing, learning, having fun. 
That winter, so severe, the crow's feet stuck, frozen to their prey. And the following June, a savage storm of rain and hail, born on a north wind. Winter in high summer. But human depredations, there's no excuse. To ruin and destroy what was made with such care is barbarous. The answer is, nurture the best people, not the loafers who have connections and not much else. How long it takes to make a garden, and how quickly a garden runs to seed from neglect. I was never at Say's Court again. As for my garden, it was there and can be remade at another time. A continuation, only that. A new growing and shaping as the seasons grow. The most any of us can hope to do is to make a difference. Not a bad epitaph to live by. But you can make a garden anywhere. In little children are the seeds of power. Not to become something grand in the world but to live in beauty. Plant early. This is where equality begins, in the nursery, garden and school. My passion, my dream, achieved, conceived and shaped here in the dockyards at Deptford. The power station did go. And I always think of it by the name they gave it at Deptford, the light. London was in the dark. Look at it now. Very well, Deptford. I absolve you. Clear debts, good friends. You can, because you do, keep me. Nature that framed us of four elements Warring within our breasts for regiment Doth teach us all to have aspiring minds Thetford <laughs>